Welcome to the annual meeting of ACMI. This year we're obviously doing it via Zoom because we can't all be up in the studio for obvious reasons, COVID being one of them. Um, and tonight, I'm not even sure of our whole production. I imagine it's going to just be like one of the, if we were in the studio, but I'd uh, <clears throat> just take a minute to introduce the board members that are with us tonight, and I'll let Norm do the staff when I'm done. We have uh, Michael Ruderman, our treasurer. Oh, Nancy, I'm forgetting your last name. I'm sorry. I know it, Nancy. Um, there's two last you. names. I'm going to make you think. No, I know. Nancy Flynn Barvik. Barvik. Nancy Flynn Barvik, who is our, our, one of our board members, one of our newer board members, Rihanna Ash. Uh, were you here last year, Rihanna? Yes, it was my first one. Oh, it's her first one last year. So she's been through a year, although this year we've had remarkably few board meetings because of COVID. <laughs> uh, our other board members can't be with us tonight. Otherwise, um, that's about it. The only thing that the board has to do tonight is we're going to just reappoint our same officers, our slate of officers and directors. And I'm going to just assume that everybody is in favor of that. So I'll just take a yes and our Madam Clerk, Ms. Flynn Barvik, will note that in her records. And that's it for me. Thank you. All right. And we will next hear from Michael Ruderman as the treasurer. Uh, pleasure to be with you tonight. This is my fourth uh, annual meeting as treasurer of ACMI. Um, let me give you a report on some of the business matters of ACMI. We have moved out of our Studio B on Mass Ave, uh, 892 Mass Ave. Uh, after some contention with the landlord regarding the landlord's uh, intentions for the property, but I can report to you tonight, good news, we, are, uh, we have signed a lease for the next year plus to uh, have a room at Arlington High School. And when this, uh, I believe it's a, like, a, like a 16, 18 month lease we have, when that comes up, we fully expect to uh, extend that into the future. So our Studio B will be located inside of Arlington High. Um, one of the advantages of this, of course, is that it puts us closer to the population that Studio B intends to serve. Another advantage is that it's free. We will spend money on outfitting it, of course, but uh, it certainly lightens the loss of the tenant improvements that we could not take with us from uh, 892 Mass Ave. The uh, uh, two other points. Uh, our investment uh, uh, of our endowment continues to do well. One of the first things I did as treasurer four years ago was to move a, a portion of the savings that the previous boards had accumulated over the years and get that invested into a combination or blend of equities and bonds. Uh, we are hedged against uh, a market crash by investing in bonds. Uh, we are also trying to take advantage as it, to the extent that it is prudent in, in the um, activity or some might say volatility of the stock, stock market. Over the last four years, we have been w very well served by the blend of investments that our professional uh, hired managers have put us in. I calculated um, after expenses at about eight and a half, maybe 8.6 or 7% annual gain. I'll tell you, four years ago, I would have been very happy to report a nice steady four and a half, five percent gain. Uh, looking at an endowment fund, that's that's a very solid uh, number to shoot for year after year after year. That means that you're growing the money responsibly. Uh, it has been a very volatile number of years in the stock market, uh, but in all the trends have been upwards and we have ridden that trend upwards. Um, so, so our cash on hand, including endowment reserves has continued to improve. Uh, speaking of cash uh, and uh, other accountings, I wish to thank Norm and his staff for all the work that they do in preparation for the annual audit, which once again has come back without any serious difficulties. The annual report is contained in, in the um, a document that's already been uh, circulated among the board members. It's at the back of it, our statement of accounts. And um, we are in good shape, that, that's the bottom line. 
Last thing from me, I thought it would take a couple of minutes uh, tonight uh, to talk about an issue that came up in, um, in online discussions in town over the last year. Uh, specifically, where does ACMI's money come from? There was some confusion to the fact, so let me begin from the beginning. We are we exist because of money that comes from the cable access providers who have contracts in Arlington. One of the conditions of their contracts with the town, RCN, Comcast, Verizon, is that in order to be able to provide service in town, they agree with Arlington to remit 5% of their proceeds on a monthly basis every quarter to the town for the sole purpose of funding local cable access. Where does this generosity come from? Certainly not the cable companies. This is in the Federal Communications Act of 1984, which basically created the, re the, 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 the regimen, the scheme of uh, you know, the, the for-profit cable providers making sure that local access would have funding in return for what they received from each town. After all, their cable, their, their hardware, runs along the lines and poles that are in the public roadways of the town. So they are benefiting from the town's permission to use the rights of way to run their wires. In return for that, and in return to the federally granted privilege of having a piece of the national bandwidth, they are obliged to, to offer as much as 5% every year to the municipality. And of course, the contract that they have with Arlington, therefore, asks them for 5% of their proceeds in order to promote local cable access. The next step is that the town contracts with a provider, which they designate and award a contract to, to, to make, make, these, uh, make this cable access go into effect. Every so many years, I believe it's 10 years, Arlington puts out a request for proposals and invites anyone in the public to bid on this contract. Arlington Community Media Inc. is the present and long-term successful bidder on this contract. Our contract with the town of Arlington says that the town will forward the payments they receive from the cable access companies to us so that we may fulfill the purposes of that 1984 federal law, which is to provide channels which, which provide public access, with educational components, and government. Government being um, you know, as if you were sitting in on, on, on all the meetings that we cover, select board, town meeting, uh, zoning board of appeals, those things. So when you hear PEG funding, that's the acronym, P-E-G, Public Educational Government. We operate under the provisions of, of this 1984 federal law that says that our town, on our behalf, may take 5% of the revenues of the cable access companies each quarter and give it to their designated tenant, us, in order to, to put our programs on the airways and serve the public interest. The, the question that I'm addressing came up that, that um, you know, someone had a complaint about you guys are favoring this or that. And after all, you get money from the town to put out your programs. So you should be acting in a certain way. Well, no, it's not quite that. We have a contract with the town. The contract says that the town is obliged to send the payments that they receive from the, from the cable companies. That's the way that we stay in business. So we, we, uh, we operate under a contract where the entailed payments to Arlington from Verizon, RCN, and Comcast come to us for the purpose of providing public, providing a public channel, providing an educational channel, and providing a channel that covers government activities. That's how we exist. That's where our funding comes from. That's our mission in a nutshell. And I'll turn it back over to, uh, to uh, Katie. Or James. Or James. We have Norm up next. That was very well said, Michael. That's a very good explanation. I hope anybody who is watching this really understands where our funding comes from and who we are and, and, and what we do. And in general, let me, let me just begin by saying I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank the staff, um, staff consisting of Jeff Monroe, who is the operations manager, 
Uh, Katie Chang is our production manager and a media guru. Uh, Sean Keene is a government access coordinator. Uh, Kevin Wetmore, our youth coordinator, and who's not here tonight is uh, Cheryl Bruschuler, says the administrative and programming assistant, and uh, Sarah Alfaro Franco, who is our public affairs person. Um, she's unfortunately cannot be here. The other person who's not here is our news director, uh, Jeffrey Barn. Jeff had taken another position in August, but Jeff over the last two years has done a phenomenal job in, in uh, developing the news, ACMI news, to the point where when issues arose in town of a social nature, uh, Jeff was right on it. And we have become a, a source of information uh, for the town and unfortunately, Jeff did leave. He will be, uh, I was going to say, it's hard to say he's going to be replaced. It's hard to replace that character. But nevertheless, uh, life goes on. Um, the other thing I want to mention is the annual report is going to, is done. And I want to thank specifically James and Katie for doing a phenomenal job uh, on the report. Yes, indeed. Um, they, it's, it takes a lot of time to do this. It really does. Uh, we do have to also wait for the audit to be completed before we can actually uh, send the, uh, the report out. And uh, the audit has come back as James, as uh, Michael had pointed out with no major problems at all. And every year we, uh, we seem to be in, in good shape. Um, I'll mention something about that a little bit later. Um, the annual report also is online just for you folks uh, who, who, are the on, who don't get it in the mail for some reason or another. It's on the website also, it's under resources, under documents, resources, documents or you can go to the AGM, AGM uh, blog post and you can check it out there. But as people have been referring to this, this has been an, really an extraordinary time that we're living in. The staff has really stepped up. Most of the staff is really doing two jobs at this point. Um, and, and we're providing the service to the town the same way we've been doing it for years, but it's, really, it's, it's phenomenal what these folks are doing. Uh, and I'm, I'm really very proud of all of them. Um, we are living in extraordinary times. And, and in fact, if you look at the annual report, I made some mention of uh, Charles Dickens talking about in the tale of two cities, talking about this is the best of time and worst of times. It was best of times in the sense that up through March of last year, everything we were doing was, was going full guns, more meetings, more sports coverage, you name it, more in-studio coverage, uh, more training people asking for equipment. Um, it was great, but, March hit, and as I say in, the, in my report, the world stopped, and unfortunately, we had to close the station. So we did. What do we do? Well, we adapted. A very creative bunch of folks here, and we have become the virtual, what I was calling the virtual meeting guru, or the go-to company in town. And specifically, Jeff Monroe and, and Sean Keen are, are handling handling a lot of that, a lot of hours to take cover these meetings and have them work. Uh, without any technical difficulties. And if there are technical difficulties, we're really on it. As you heard earlier, we've really been trying to uh, correct any problems that may work. It may, may be a problem if we're, as we interface with the cable providers. But um, hopefully in, in the future, that will, will quote, go back to quote normal. And I'm sure everybody who's watching wants to go back to normal too. But um, we are operating a little bit on the handicapped side with smaller staff, but uh, as I say, the staff has been step, has stepped up and is actually working in effect two jobs at the same time. So congratulations to them. Um, I, hope, I hope your spouses, wives, husbands, spouse are understanding of long hours, let's put it that way. Um, so all of our town meetings are now, are now virtual. That was what you just mentioned before. Um, Michael mentioned uh, how our funding transpires, um, where we get it from. And uh, some, some of our funding has decreased over the past year. The reason for that is, well, go back to COVID. When COVID hit, a lot of folks were out of work. And when you're out of work, you have to conserve what money you do have. And some of the things that get cut are uh, ex extraneous types of services. And some, fortunately, a lot of folks are saying that their cable is extraneous and we don't need to deal with that. So they cut the cable, which means we get less money with fewer people on cable. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, um, but we definitely have less funding than, than, we, had, than we had anticipated. Um, the other fact, uh, the other major factor that took place here was, uh, as Michael mentioned, Studio B. 
uh, is no more, unfortunately. We had a great run with it. Everybody uh, in town, in fact, jokingly, uh, would say, oh, you guys moved to Studio B uh, on Mass Ave. No, we didn't. It's just they didn't understand where Studio A was up in Park Avenue. That's the main studio where everything takes, where, where everything happens. Studio B was, was created across from the high school and uh, specifically for uh, visibility, for more people in town to come in and join, but more importantly, for a lot of the youth to just walk across the street and uh, get video instruction. And uh, that's what they've been doing. But fortunately, again, the other side of the coin is that the Studio B will be in the older part of the high school for two years approximately until the new high school is built. And we've been in discussion with the architects about where we will be uh, located in the new high school. That's an ongoing discussion. Um, looking a little bit to the future here, um, we have on a federal level, national level, we have a change of uh, government coming up. Uh, I don't hear any cheers, I don't hear any boos, but be that as it may, the FCC is a critical factor in our existence. Up until this time with a Republican um, uh, majority in the FCC, what that meant was that one, net neutrality, net, net neutrality went by the by. That's unfortunate, in my opinion. Uh, the second thing was uh, a lot of the cable companies decided that they were gonna want to charge back uh, cost to them, give it, charge it back to us for things like uh, connection to the high school, connection from ourselves to the cable company head end, uh, anything basically they could think of that they could charge us back for, including bandwidth, uh, they were going to charge back. The FCC did not make a ruling on this. It was held in abeyance. And as it turns out now, because it looks like the FCC will be full democratic um, and the chairman, probably a chairwoman by the look of it, uh, is going to be uh, in, in control. I think that net neutrality may come, will come back up again and maybe net neutrality will be back uh, available to all of us, including those folks who cannot afford to pay higher prices for higher speeds uh, on the internet that the cable companies want to charge us. And I think that charge that they want to give back to all the PEG access stations uh, will go away. And that was, again, that's on, a, on the national level. Don't know where that's gonna go, but with uh, new government coming in um, in January, there'll be a lot of changes and hopefully it will be all for the better uh, as for PEG as you, as you now know what PEG is. I, um, I think that's pretty much it, it for me. Um, I'd like to pass this over if uh, it, there's a question and answer period at the end of this folks, by the way, but I'd like to pass this over to Jeff Monroe, our operations manager. Um, and uh, James, um, I think I'm gonna let you carry on from one person to another as we move forward, okay? Who, who's James? I James among the staff, so. Oh, James who? Oh, that's right, Com the communications. Of course, why would I talk about James? He's only the communications manager. That's right. James is actually doing two jobs as well, everybody. James is actually uh, stepping in for the news director um, and he's working with interns as well as being the communications manager. I apologize, James, but yeah. <laughs> you, there, I don't know which one to say that you're, you are, which of the three. So. Yeah, there you go. Um, All right, anyway, so take it. it is of no matter, obviously, and we are moving on to Jeff Monroe, our operations manager. It is nice to actually not have to wear a mask for a while. Um, so we did, we did the news in studio tonight. It's pretty much the only thing we're doing um, in the studio and control room lately, outside of the uh, community conversations, virtual town forums, uh, even some bid openings. Um, I'll mute myself. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, but glad to be here with the facilities and equipment, uh, with the state of the studio address, I guess this can be. Um, it's it's been great to be in the control room and in the studio where obviously we had to house all of the things from studio b since we moved out of studio b everything moved into studio a as we wait for studio b to be completed where we can move things back um and there have been some equipment usage uh some control room usage like i said for the news 
Um, but it's been tough on the staff. I want to thank the staff for their flexibility and all of the um, multiple hats and multiple jobs we've all been taking on over these past few months or this past year. Um, but it's funny, in my report, I talk about new media, and I've done this every year. Um, in, in 2019, I'm thinking back, uh, September 2019, we were talking about VR and 360 cameras, and um, you know, we're not sharing the goggles anymore, um, like we were for Town Day, Town Day 2019. But that was an exciting time. We were playing with some new new equipment. Um, we still have the VR equipment. The 360 camera has been in use. The ACA used it for some of their website photos. Um, we did a number of different projects with the 360 camera. And then the drones are some of the other new media equipment I was talking about. And Michael Rudiman uh, did a project, um, Tyler Valancourt flying the drones over the monument in the center of town. That was some fantastic footage. But um, it's really exciting to see the equipment being used uh, just prior to lockdown. And then during lockdown, we got creative and we were trying to be flexible where we could. We were trying to navigate to new media or new equipment now is using StreamYard or uh, using Zoom and we're continuing to do programs. So uh, volunteer member producers are using um, the virtual studio to, to, to do talk shows. Um, the news has been using the Zoom platform to do interviews. So it, it is exciting to see that even though we're not here in this building, um, that there's still a lot of content being created, the community access is still accessible um, and the staff is handling all those resources and services as we've we are designed to. Um, the back to the state of the studio, um, we're st we're growing in all these different areas. We have some new cameras that just came in that are specific for sports because they do live streaming, and we're hopefully when we're back to normal and back to sports um, that we'll be able to go from camera to air. Um, and do that a lot easier than, than we have lugging a lot of extra equipment around with us. Um, the DSLR filmmaking program uh, has been growing. We've been buying more lenses, more DSLR cameras. Um, and that's been exciting to watch filmmakers create uh, in that way. Um, this past year, we saw a lot more live multicam music programs with things like Studio B sessions. Um, and I'm not gonna steal your thunder, Kevin, but uh, there, there were, the mobile studio usage was up just prior to COVID too. So we were looking to see how we could use those um, portable studios. And that's been exciting to share uh, with other groups. So we've, we've now done a couple multi-cam events even in the COVID situation where we were bringing the, our mobile studio, keeping safe and actually covering, uh, I did an interview in the gallery at uh, Arlington Center for the Arts this past week. So that was a, a new type of setup and a new um, experience for all of us. We're hoping to do more of that. And um, back to the report, I did report uh, master control got some upgrades with uh, network controlled KVM. So we can actually have an IT service um, come in uh, virtually and reset servers. Um, we upgraded and expanded some of our server programs so that they can uh, output and input live streams and do that better. Than, than we were before. But um, I can't uh, say enough about the ACMI staff. I'm very proud and grateful for all of you. Um, so it's times like this when we all pull together to get a meeting together and, and do a report like this that is exciting to look at the list of things that we've been doing all year. So that's about it for me. I want to thank everybody. I don't know if there's questions at the end. I'm, I'll be here.
but I'm going to pass it back to James. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey. Um, and uh, so now we are going to begin. Uh, we'll have the first of a series of kind of area reports, and each one of these will have uh, the person responsible talking about um, what's happened in the last year in that area. But then uh, we will also have a short reel of uh, examples of work from that field um, to follow. So a little variety coming up and we'll start with Katie as our production manager. All right, thank you, James. And uh, yeah, I guess I just wanted to kind of reiterate what Norm and Jeff kind of said that it's been a very challenging and creative year. I mean, I guess every year is uh, creative, but, <laughs> and there are always challenges, but this year was definitely different for everyone's. But I think, you know, as a staff and as a community, everyone really stuck with it. And I think that really shows. Um, but thinking back even like a year ago, like in August and September, you know, we were all focused on still things that we're focusing on our community and volunteering. Um, you know, like a year ago, we were doing town day where a lot of our volunteers come out and help crew um, with these town -wide, this town-wide event. And, you know, then later on, I remember our volunteers were coming out to help us do Crowdsource Boston, um, which is kind of like a statewide crowdsourcing project where everyone picks a scene from a film and all these different scenes get put together to make a film. And that was amazing. And it's a little bit different now, but we're still kind of pulling things like that together. Um, and before COVID, you know, we are still doing our workshops and our trainings and individual kind of like one-on-one -on -one lessons, like we usually do with Premier camera training with our JVC camcorders and GH5s. And even when COVID hit, you know, it was a little bit more difficult, but we still had some trainings utilizing Zoom. Of course, Zoom kind of became everyone's go-to once that hit in March. And it was challenging, but um, using Zoom as a way to t even teach Premiere still worked out, you know, sharing your screen and showing someone right there at home how to use Premiere, it still worked out. Um, so we adapted and we were creative with what we were doing. Um, and I guess some other things that I was really proud of before COVID hit <laughs> is that we started to really do a lot more studio productions. We had a lot of new members coming in for studio productions and doing like live to tape graphics with BPICs. So being able to um, pull graphics in live during a studio shoot really helped speed up the process so that there's kind of less editing for, for people. Um, and last year we even had like a fall workshop series where um, some of the highlights were you know, just using how to play with shutter speed on cameras. Um, I did like a YouTube channel um, class. So kind of like different things like that kind of cropped up over the year. Um, and then again, COVID hit and we all kind of started using Zoom um, for studio productions, you know, like virtual studio productions, right? So we mostly did a lot of interview studio shoots using Zoom. And of course the town utilized Zoom a lot with meetings and community conversations, community conversations. I'll kind of let, you know, maybe Sean will mention that later on. Um, and of course, local elections, we really used that a lot to help film our debates and our one-on-one -on -one, uh, candidate conversations. And then moving on later in the summer, we started utilize, utilizing StreamYard, which was kind of a similar platform to Zoom where you can have um, audio and visuals um, on your webcam. Um, but just the added benefit of have having different camera views and graphics kind of right in the platform. So Zoom is, or StreamYard is kind of like our new go-to thing. Um, they're all really excited about. We've done productions with um, a lot of like non other nonprofits in town recently. So ACE, AEF, um, we might be using that for like MLK Day this upcoming year. So StreamYard is kind of like the new fun thing that we get to play around with. Um, so even though it was kind of a challenging year, you know, I think everyone still kind of came up with things to do and ways to still be productive together. Um, and I didn't even mention, but studio nights, which was, you know, going on weekly Wednesday evenings here at the studio, we were able to, I think, successfully transfer that over to a virtual format where we still met every, every Wednesday evening on Zoom. And sometimes it was more social, but we 
did a couple of really great productions as well, from interviews to more creative pro like group projects, like um, participating in the Fox and Owl Festival, as well as making some um, like Black Lives Matter video series together. Um, so I think I had a lot of fun, and I think you know I think the members did as well um, that came. I do have um, a video to share, a little highlight reel of the, the year that I put together. It's just over six minutes long um, and it kind of highlights a lot of these productions that I've kind of touched on, but you'll get that visual. Um, and if you're looking at the annual report, some of the ones that we highlighted was, um, I'll just read them off and then you'll see kind of clips of them in this reel, but a documentary by Rodrigo Souza. Um, he went, did a trip to Vietnam. So there's a really nice like musical documentary he did, um, Community Update, which was a show by an ACMI production intern last fall, I believe, where she interviews and meets with different nonprofits, um, a stand sculpture documentary that our longtime ACMI member, producer Margie DeMonte made, um, where she, she did the whole thing herself. She filmed a stand sculpture um, competition in New Hampshire and edited the whole thing herself with voiceover. You'll see a clip of that coming up. Um, of course, our another longtime ACMI member, Charlotte Pierce, uh, brought back um, St. John's Coffeehouse series. So she spent lots of hours and got groups of us together to help film at the church and edited that like herself, full multi-cam and premiere. So um, you'll see a clip of that. And then some great interview shows, um, Conversations with Great Authors by Michael Amanius. And then two new shows from the spring, Fandom 101 by Julia Bloom, and We Hold These Truths with uh, Michael Brown. And let me pull that reel hey, up Katie. for you guys. Yeah. Sorry, um, just before you go to the reel, I did want to just add one other thing. Um, you had so much to, 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 to touch on. Um, but uh, mostly at uh, the aforementioned Charlotte Pierce's behest, but with Katie and Jeff really following through on that, uh, we also, uh, created a producers meeting, a weekly producers meeting uh, for people a few months back. And that's, uh, it's always a real challenge, obviously, to keep uh, members and producing members, especially engaged when you can't get into the studio. So um, this is one way in which uh, we are just kind of um, tapping into the power of our community and really still being able to foster creativity, foster collaboration, et cetera, uh, in a simple way, but which demands really good follow through. And so kudos to Charlotte for getting us going on it. But then again, in typical ACMI fashion, uh, we followed through in a way that is working uh, quite well for everybody who's involved. So just wanted to make sure we talked about that, at least mentioned it. Yeah, no, thank, thanks for reminding me. I forgot, yeah, that started up, I think it was September. I'm sure Charlotte can uh, remind me later if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, it's been really successful and I think it has a really good um, place to go looking forward in the next couple months and stuff. Um, let me pull up this reel like I was doing. Um, like I said, just over six minutes long. And uh, yeah, like just don't forget, like you see these names, these producer names and you see these hosts, but there are a lot of people in the background that you don't see, um, both staff, volunteers, and interns alike that make this stuff happen. Day 2019. It's outstanding so far. We've just only hit the food vendor, so we're trying to make our way up Mass Ave. Hi and what is everybody, it's the Holiday Panda, welcoming you to ACMI's Holiday Show. And then a big blue smile. 
Yeah, look at that nice smile. Darn, this is definitely not the ACMI logo that I thought it was gonna be, <laughs> but the colors are there. To me and you, that's the main character, Deku, character sorry, Deku, <laughs> from yeah. My Hero Academia. Um, can you yeah. tell me a bit about this costume and its process? Funny thing, I actually got this t-shirt online. Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah. Stoked your ambition to write, or did you have it kind of before that, and then this just intensified it? So. I had the belly fire. I wanted to write, and now that I had a storyline uh, about the, you know, the, uh, the black marketing, um, what he did was demystify the process. So on this show, you are going to meet people who are making it possible to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. People today who are making the words of the Declaration of Independence come true. A white police officer two, saw two black people talking and yelling and screaming and, you know, getting at yeah. each other. He may have you know, go over and hit him. Yeah. He said, because he assumed the next thing was gonna be someone throwing a punch. Yeah, and I've been actually witness to incidences where I've seen police officers pull their revolvers on, you know, people of color because they were talking loudly, assuming that they're arguing that they're going to, you know, get into a fight. And, and then everyone would be like, whoa, 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 like you're totally misinterpreting the situation yeah. here. This is where their physical endurance begins and is being tested. The competitors have three days to complete their work. Eight hours a day, a total of 24 hours to finish their masterpieces before being judged. The population of Saigon is growing faster than expected. The official number is now over 13 million, but illegal residents and a transient population could make this figure much higher. This number and the government plan very soon will transform Saigon into a megalopolis. Doing your chores? Good. Sharing toys with your younger brother Alex? Even though he might break them? Good. But murdering people? That's bad. Welcome to our late night talk show from New England. I'm Steve Katzos, and we are excited because we made it a decade! <laughs> what do you think about this, Dad? I thought you would have quit by now. Oh! Oh, well, Dad, uh, I didn't quit. Now you lost the bet, so you better pay up. With you know. Thank you. That's all right. The defining images of who I am. But can I write it out at the end? Lie to me. It keeps me prisoner, but sets me on a path of being free. A stroke of brush, a magic song, but not
congrats to every, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what was produced last year. So hats off to all the volunteers and producers and members and staff that helped with just, just a few of those. And if you haven't, you know, if you haven't seen some of those, go to acma.tv or our YouTube channel to, to watch like the full episodes of those. Um, I just want to point out those last two were um, the Steve Katzo show and Alessio's AM Garden did win awards um, for the, the National uh, Alliance for Community Media Awards that happen every year. So congrats to Steve and Alessio. And hot off the press from last night, the Regional Community Media Awards, um, I forget what they're called already, but <laughs> Steve Katzo's, nor the Nor'easter, Nor'easter Nor <clears throat> Awards. Yeah, so Steve Katzo's placed first place for a general talk show. Um, Rodrigo, um, one of his shorter documentaries, won third place for music and performance. And then um, Issa Dre, who's a student, um, got second place for, um, I think it was perf another performance in theater. And then Salon by the Sea also won third place. I think I got my categories mixed up, but Salon by the Sea was um, a same group category. project, same category. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, congrats to like all the creative volunteers out there. <laughs> um, Norm, is that, do you want to be recognized, Norm? Yes. There you go. Yeah. I, uh, in addition to, for, in addition to forgetting about you, James, I forgot about a couple of other people I wanted to mention. I, mm -hmm. And this is, these are, these folks are important to who we are as ACMI and what we've been able to do. One is, uh, uh, no, they, these folks are no longer with us, unfortunately. It's Alex Van Thong. Alex was a sports producer for us. Sorry to interrupt. They, they are with us uh, uh, on, on earth. They're just not with the organization. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks for the clarification. They're no longer with ACMI. Let me put it that way. <laughs> nice catch, Jeff. Uh, the other person is uh, Brenda Mahoney, who was the assistant news director. Uh, also, Len Diggins. Len is now the select uh, board member. Uh, and uh, Jonathan Barbato. I think you saw some clips of him in there as well. Jonathan was a production manager. He's gone on to bigger and better things. Uh, I think he's working for the BSO at this point. <clears throat> and uh, more That's importantly, definitely. somebody who is with still with ACMI, thank you, Jeff, is Jared Sweep. Jared is our editor, video editor, supreme editing skills. He's marvelous. So I didn't want to forget all of those folks. So um, I apologize. And uh, James, I apologize to you again. <laughs> Take it. Um, and if I can just interject before we moved on to uh, to Sean Keen for, with government, which will be next, um, I did want to say that in an example of life following art, um, you may recall because they're very striking images that in the clips that uh, Katie was just showing of Rodrigo's film from Vietnam, there was a a patch of green under a bunch of really huge buildings, a really beautiful part of Saigon, which my son, who is married to a Vietnamese woman now and lives in, is currently living in Saigon, had not heard of um, at that point until he saw Rodrigo's film. And he and his wife are now living in one of those buildings that you saw on the screen. Um, so pretty, pretty cool, pretty fun. Um, anyway, talking about pretty cool and pretty fun, it's Sean Keen with the Government Report. Hi, uh, this is uh, Sean uh, Keen, the Government and Programming Coordinator. Uh, yeah, the pandemic has brought a uh, host of challenges to our coverage of government meetings uh, this year, uh, beginning with the fact that they went fully remote starting in March 2020 via the Zoom platform. We had to make a lot of adjustments, just technically and logistically. Uh, just getting all these meetings covered. Uh, one of the biggest things is just how much uh, hours have kind of increased just with uh, meeting coverage, uh, largely because I think as <laughs> we can kind of suspect uh, when people aren't in a government building room and looking at the clock, it's a lot easier to kind of talk uh, in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> We've also increased our meeting coverage. Uh, this year we started fully uh, recording the Zoning Board of Appeals and I've also looked into other uh, meetings uh, just as now all meetings are on Zoom it's much easier to uh, record multiple meetings at once by just uh, one person. There's also been a lot of hot button issues in town uh, between lots of different elections uh, and then just information sessions regarding COVID-19. Uh, this is one of the most uh, 
I would say, contested election cycles I've seen uh, just in my time at ACMI. Uh, and this with the complications of COVID-19, we had to uh, have some <laughs> different circumstances of uh, having virtual debates uh, for school committee and select board, as well as uh, board of assessors and town clerk. We enabled candidates to film their own profiles, and we also held one-on-one -on -one conversations with the vast majority of them. These comprehensive efforts, along with the election being delayed to pandemic, meant that ACMI broadcast more election-based content this year than ever before. And then one of the most unprecedented uh, circumstances uh, of having one of the first outside town meetings uh, on the Pierce Field at the high school. It was uh, broadcast live on ACMI, and yeah, those, those were some big ones. Uh, we also had uh, community conversations uh, uh, just about financial uh, impacts, uh, COVID-19 and, and other big, big things happening in town. Uh, of course, we just had the, the virtual town meeting finish. Uh, I have a, a video uh, <laughs> that uh, shows a lot of this stuff I talked about. <laughs>
as Norm mentioned, doing more productions really than we ever have before. Um, we're doing a lot of sports games. Um, the Alex Van Thong, who is now has now moved on from ACMI, but he was a huge um, help in in really covering a whole lot of Arlington sports that we haven't been able to cover before, such as wrestling and you know a lot of the games, um, both boys and girls, hockey, basketball, soccer, etc. Um, I should mention that. Uh, this was the first year that we had a boys hockey season without Walter Scott, our longtime commentator, who sadly passed away last December. Um, and uh, he was really a, uh, a gem and we were really lucky to have him as part of our ACMI community. He was a local hockey legend, if you didn't know him. And he just had a lot of passion for the game and loved calling the boys hockey games. Um, so Ken Kohlberg this season or last season stepped up to take Walter's spot um, and Ken had been calling our soccer games and he's done an amazing job doing both soccer and now hockey. Um, and he actually had the opportunity to meet with Walter shortly before he died to uh, kind of pick his brain and talk about how he'd be taking on his role. Um, and then the boys team had a great year last year and they went to the championship and we were we had our press passes um, and everything ready to go film the championship game in the garden. And, and that's when everything got shut down. So they were ended up being co-champions, um, unfortunately, but it was a really exciting year nonetheless for sports here in Arlington. Um, aside from sports, we've really built our partnerships within the high school, especially with the music tech program, which has been a growing partnership over the last five or six years or however really long that program's been in existence. But now it's gotten to the point where it's having a video crew is really part of their curriculum where the students are expected to build a video team and film all of their concerts. So last year we had multi-cam recordings of all four music tech concerts um, and they do a great job. And as the year went on, they got better and better. Um, and uh, so that, that's, that really lends itself well to ACMI. And now that will be in the, in the high school physically, um, building these kinds of partnerships will be even easier. And uh, especially with like classes like music tech, kids won't have to get field trips or permissions to come across the street to the studio. They can just come on down to the studio during school or during their class, or I can come up to them easily. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I think that'll really do a lot for us, not just in putting these productions together, but also recruiting youth to come in and get involved with us. Um, we also continue our partnerships with the AP history classes where we train students on documentary filmmaking. Um, and uh, they produced a lot of um, documentaries covering various subjects that came out really great. Um, we submit these to a C-SPAN contest, and for the second year in a row, one of them was a winner in the uh, one of the finalists, and, and they won cash prize from C-SPAN, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then we also do we did a lot of work with the Audison, as always, um, filming all of their concerts. We build our youth crews at the Audison when they're in seventh and eighth grade, and then by the time they get to high school, they're they're you know professional filmmakers and videographers. So um, it's it's a great program over at the Audison. I've got to mention Edith Moisan. She's amazing. She recruits all the kids and puts together all these amazing projects. And I try to get over there as often as I can to help out on the technical end and offer training and support um, and all of our equipment. Um, but we uh, a lot of the concerts got cut short last year because of COVID, but we, felt we still got a lot of productions done with the Audison. They also continued their teen cooking show, which is a lot of fun. Um, it's where each each month we film an episode of a French cooking show with professional French chefs, hosted also by middle school students and produced by middle school students. Um, and uh, then in March, um, the pandemic hit and school was shut down, and everything went remote and. Uh, a lot changed from the youth perspective, um, but we were super busy during that time. The school relied heavily on us for support in a lot of ways. We built a page on our website called the Ponder Remote where 
Principal Janger would post daily announcements every single morning um, that students would watch and give them updates on all sorts of things about remote learning and you know what's going on. Um, so that they they, they really uh, use that a lot to kind of communicate because at first it was it was really difficult for teachers and educators figuring out how to navigate around this situation that got tossed upon them. Um, and the, uh, the biggest um, thing that we really took on to help out with uh, the schools was the 2020 graduation, which couldn't be in person. So we, pro we helped produce a virtual graduation, which me meant that we filmed all the speeches um, separately. We filmed each student in the senior class getting their cap and gown and uh, diploma um, and edited together a really nice production that was aired at the same time that graduation would have happened. Um, so they had all the speeches, they had musical performances, um, you know, you saw every student graduate had their name read. So it was it was a massive undertaking and I hope we don't have to do that again, but it was pretty cool. I thought the um, the show was pretty fun to watch, um, and uh, we didn't have to sit outside in 95 degree weather either, which was okay. Um, but uh, so that that was a big thing. Um, we also helped put together virtual choirs. So because the school musical was canceled, we they were going to be performing Tommy by the Who. Um, so we we helped create with the school a virtual choir of all the cast members singing the finale from that which was really popular it got over ten thousand views um i don't even know what the number is now but that was back in in may on our various streaming platforms on instagram youtube um vimeo etc facebook um and then we also had a virtual our our annual a town film festival for teen filmmakers um, had to go virtual as well. So that was another thing that happened right after everything shut down. So we actually had all of our judging in person, I think like that Thursday night when like the NBA shut down and then we got out of that and I found out, you know, the NBA shut down, Tom Hanks has COVID. And um, I think like the next day school was, school was done. So we had to shift to having the screening be online, which was, still fun. We had a lot of views. We did that in partnership with the Regent Theater. They put it on their website. Um, doesn't make up for being able to show your film in front of an audience on a big screen. So I felt bad for all the filmmakers, but we had some really talented kids, a lot from Arlington, making some really great films. Um, and that's always one of my favorite events that we put on every year. Um, and another thing I want to mention before we get to my reel um, is that one of our a new show we have on the channel, on the education channel called UView, is a news and variety show that was put together by one of our incredible youth volunteers named Sam Derringer. Um, and he's interviewed, he's covered various topics from, um, from Black Lives Matter in Arlington and in the school system um, to uh, the uh, Monotomy Hunter logo for the school. Um, and then a lot of more lighthearted fun segments on that show as well, highlighting student, you know, artists and musicians and all sorts of things. It's a really, it's a really impressive show. And he did the first few episodes all by himself with the help from Dan Gorbanov, another great youth member. Um, and now he's built it to be a very large crew of volunteers from the high school working together. And we partner with the journalism club and um, brought in a bunch of new students. So Sam's a senior and he's hoping that this awesome show he's put together can continue and kind of be a mainstay of the education channel going forward in the next few years. So if you have time, watch what he's done. It's, it's really great. Um, anyways, so I will now share my reel. Oh, and I also mention uh, the first thing you're going to see on this reel is um, a clip from Studio B Sessions, which is our awesome music program we would have at Studio B. Um, which we will no longer be hosting there, but hopefully we bring it back in some capacity. Um, but this year we had some really great bands and it was all youth crews producing it. Um, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. So there we go. And I am in front of Studio B as well for the last time 
tonight. So say goodbye. These blues and soon I'm feeling no pain. Lucy, Madeline, Bell. Luke, Michael, Baraducci. Galen, William, Thornton, Bermudez. Hello, one and all, and welcome to the first ever community wide live virtual talent show event. Arlington's Got Talent. One love, one life, it's one need in the night. These black women saved me yet again. I got up out of my bed for the first time in weeks. <laughs> I started talking to them, what can I do, what can I help? I forgot, people look up to me as a leader. <laughs> How am I supposed to lead if I can't even walk out the door? It's my first time out of months. But I know today, <laughs> I know today that my life matters. But we need committed advocates in all branches of the government, and at the state, local, and federal levels. In coming years, there needs to be a revolution of information, commitment, and legislation, or the world simply won't survive. 2020 will be a pivotal year in what has become a fight for our lives. Can you please just stop for a second and tell me what you're looking for? Here it is. Whoa. A charging knoll. A flaming engine. A skilled battle master. A reanimated skeleton. A psychic elephant. And many more. The only key you need is imagination. Dare to enter the world of infinite possibility? Welcome to the Artisan Dungeon and Dragons Club. D&D Club meets in the Media Center every day before and after school. Missouri takes a shot wide, goes back again to Missouri. Missouri wins a score! A beautiful shot by John Missouri as he whistled, Anthony Missouri, excuse me, as he whistled the top shelf. And I'll tell you right now, Nick Sicuela didn't even have a chance there. It looked like he might have even had a screen. First goal of the season for uh, Anthony Missouri, a senior captain. And uh, the Arlington boys now have put the Melrose boys in the hole, two goals to nothing. Kevin. I describe Kevin as a very busy man. I'm sure you guys can all tell for yourselves. Um, so we are moving uh, now to the, the next and um, let me promise you, I guess, um, that we are nearing the end now. Um, and um, I'm going to talk about news and public affairs and also a little bit about interns. I am, however, going to keep it um, 
uh, what I would imagine at this point is blessedly short um, for people. Um, I do uh, want to acknowledge that in the fields of news and public affairs, which are uh, areas that ACMI has invested a lot in and, um, and has had great ambition for, um, in those areas, like in everything else that has been mentioned tonight, um, we have persevered and innovated and found ways to collaborate with uh, different entities uh, in and around town um, to make sure that we are continuing to deliver on our commitment to this community um, in every way that we know how and as well as we can. Um, I will not uh, go into great details about all the things that we covered. Um, we do have a couple of very short reels, one from uh, news and one from public affairs, and I'll divide those up. I'll ask Katie, I'll talk briefly about news and ask Katie to run that, and then briefly about public affairs, and we'll do that. Um, but, um, you know, you'll be able to see from there a lot of the people we were talking to and a lot of the events that we were following uh, through this very, very eventful year. We all, um, obviously COVID is the biggest thing in all of our lives um, and a biggest thing in this particular fiscal year for ACMI. But interestingly, I, I'd like to just emphasize the fact that on the news and public affairs side, from what I have heard from others in town, and hopefully those who are attending tonight would, will agree, um, ACMI is more appreciated, more recognized um, for what it is that we bring to, to, to the town uh, than we were before. Um, our own efforts uh, are, un, are, are no, not very different from what they've always been because I feel like our commitment has been full on all the, all the time. But people have turned to us much more, are depending on us much more, and we are delivering. And that is a message that is getting out into the community. And I appreciate my own intersection with that when I hear from people. And I certainly hope that my fellow staff members do the same. Um, and that you all, everybody on this call, because you're all uh, connected, intimately connected to ACMI, that we all feel proud of that fact. Um, so uh, as was already mentioned, new, the way that news works, uh, JB or Jeff Barnt, as uh, Norm mentioned, came in and was tasked a couple of years ago with getting the news on once a week. Let's get a weekly newscast. We've been talking about it for a long time. Please do it. He did it and uh, had a quite robust situation going on with community members as well as interns uh, coming up, uh, at participating in the newscasts um, and with great enthusiasm, I have to say. Um, and, uh, and then once COVID hit and we had to let our interns go, at least those for the spring at that time, um, uh, JB basically took it, uh, everything on a one-man operation for several months and did superbly well. Um, and, um, you know, that's, uh, that is a wonderful, that is both a testament to him, but also to the fact that um, there is a spirit at ACMI, which is just going to figure out how to keep, uh, keep things going, whatever, whatever the odds. Um, as JB moved on, we have stayed virtual for, we, or we had to stay virtual for a little while until we could get back into the studio. Um, and we have, uh, over recent months, been able to broadcast at least the anchor parts of each newscast, uh, for, or we've been able to tape those in the studio. And um, I think everybody is still energized by the fact of getting back into the studio with real lighting, with an actual set that's 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 quite lovely, um, and the professionalism that that kind of confers on on the proceedings. So um, we're proud of the news program. There's here is a short reel. It was a jam-packed Lions hearing room at a zoning board of appeals meeting this week. At issue bringing a new sit-down restaurant pub to the old Baelish building on Mass Ave. After years of planning and voter approval, Arlington's Public High School is getting ready for its transformation. Site work will begin in just a few weeks, and officials tell us if you want to walk the lawn or take pictures before the work crews arrive, now is the time. 
The town is making preparations for the possible spread of coronavirus here in this area. All schools in Arlington have been closed. That's public schools as well as the two Catholic schools. This is to try to slow the spread of the coronavirus disease. Out of an abundance of caution, we are now doing our weekly broadcast outside of our studios in remote locations simply because ACMI studios have been closed off to the public until further notice. Town leaders think that this crisis is going to go considerably longer than was first thought. Then, of course, there was the tragic death of George Floyd, who was killed by a police officer in Minneapolis, while three other officers just stood around and watched. And what happened after that? to some was absolutely shocking and stunning. To others, it was long overdue. This will be my last week with ACMI News. I'm going to be moving on to other opportunities that hopefully will be just as rewarding. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of ACMI News. I'm Isabel Litterst, back here at the ACMI studio for the first time since March. Many locations had to change the traditional methods of voting due to the coronavirus. So how did Election Day look for Arlington in particular? Okay, so as you can see, that was a kind of very quick uh, chronological uh, view of the, of the news events in Arlington. And it didn't even touch on some of the major things that we were a big part of presenting, already mentioned um, by others here. But the community conversations that took place in this town uh, throughout the spring and summer, uh, with our uh, collaboration um, were really important events um, if, in the social and racial reckoning that needs to happen um, here in Arlington and is continuing to happen uh, in the aftermath of Lieutenant Pedrini, the, what we all refer to as the Lieutenant Pedrini incident at this point, uh, which is now two plus years old, um, but we are uh, going to be uh, in this battle as a community for a long time, and ACMI is going to be part of the good fight there, I am sure. Um, moving over to public affairs, there's a lot of overlap here, so I will just say that public affairs is uh, ba basically uh, was, um, we came up with this a couple of years ago as a, as a new division um, within ACMI to accommodate for the fact that our public affairs producer, Sarah Alfaro Franco, who is not here tonight and um, regrettably is not going to be here at ACMI uh, uh, beyond the end of the year. She uh, is going to be moving on to another full-time job. Um, she's been trying to juggle ACMI and this other job for a long time now, and um, it's just that's... That is, the, them's the breaks, folks. Um, we and I, maybe I in particular, because I work so much with Sarah, I'm really going to miss her. Uh, but nonetheless, we of course wish her the absolute very best. She deserves that. Um, anyway, uh, public affairs came about because Sarah's enjoyed, as do I, taking deeper dives into a number of issues. Um, we have produced a whole bunch of different series over the years. I won't go over them exhaustively, um, but we added to each one of those major, uh, each one of the five or six major series that we have this year, we added seminal new episodes, especially once COVID hit, we wanted to concentrate on what's happening inside of uh, to incarcerated populations on what's happening with food insecurity what's on how uh, the library and other institutions here would continue to provide their services those are the the areas that we wanted to explore we found the people who we should talk to and presented uh presented those conversations um consistently throughout the uh, dark months of the spring and into summer um, and really happy to do so. I'll mention just one series because it was one that we um, that that is new in this fiscal year, and that is the the ABCs of LGBTQ plus, and that is a series that focuses on both the the basics and then and then some of the 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 naughtier details and and and, and issues uh, for and within uh, the world of our gay and lesbian bisexual. Um, you, uh, and, and non-binary, et cetera, uh, populations. Um, so again, ACMI is always um, uh, intent on exploring 
uh, the situations of vulnerable populations of all sorts um, and trying to bring both light um, and, um, and action to those areas. Um, and also we love to recognize people who are doing that kind of work. We have several series in which we did that as well. Um, so uh, public affairs is, has taken a bit of a hit with Sarah being busy. Um, and me having to move over uh, to take the helm on the news operation over these last months. Uh, but I am hopeful that the year 2021 will see uh, a, a return um, for us to a really vigorous schedule of public affairs programming um, as well. Uh, so again, one more short reel. I guess before, before we get into it though, let me mention that you, um, if we had shown different aspects of the uh, newscasts that you just saw, um, you would have seen how intrinsic the work of our interns has been. Um, right now, our news team is basically me and a former intern and five current interns. Um, and they are continuing to produce stories each and every week. Um, and they are getting a great experience. Uh, so great as far as they're concerned that literally every one of our current interns has asked to continue with us um, beyond this particular semester. So uh, that's a pretty good indication that we are doing well uh, within this internship program that we started about seven years ago now and that taps into um, the youth energy on a number of our different college campuses here. Uh, but we have always committed ourselves to delivering a great hands-on experience to these guys. The word has spread organically and consistently over the years. We're getting great candidates in. They're having wonderful experiences. So this is a real bright spot for ACMI and one that wasn't, uh, that looked briefly like it was going to be a hard to continue um, under COVID, but we've kind of hunkered down the ACMI staff, figured out how we could continue to offer a good experience to production and news and public affairs interns, et cetera, uh, and then had a great time with them and they had a great time over the summer, right into the fall. And as I mentioned, uh, that's gonna be moving forward from here. So thanks for listening. Um, and here's the public affairs reel. And from that, we'll hit Katie one more time and then we'll just, and then we'll wrap things up. Arlington Eats has a very long history with the community. Uh, it actually originally started back in 1991 as the Arlington Food Pantry. So we have six employees. We have our own cargo van. We work with well over 20 or 25 donor agencies under normal circumstances. This is always kind of a balancing act of both taking on new food donors while also taking on new recipient agencies. We really act uh, to connect people with resources um, and have a big focus on federal nutrition programs. COVID-19 has posed a lot of challenges um, for us um, as advocates in the field, as parents, and as you can imagine, it's both significant challenges for the children and the families that we advocate for. It is, the challenge has been, how do we do our traditional advocacy and our organizing in ways that have be remote? There are a lot of busy people. I mean, really, really busy people here in Massachusetts and people all around the country that are doing work uh, to decarcerate people probably over 10,000 individuals go in and out of uh, jails and prisons in our state every single day. I'm outraged by the way that law enforcement handled themselves on that day. That was, there was no reason for that conduct. One is the sex assigned at birth. Uh, the next is your gender identity. And then gender expression, sexual orientation, and a romantic orientation. Even just creating kind of a, a social norm mm -hmm. for things where, you know, gender neutral restrooms, the use, use of pronouns and, and, and by giving 
everyone to, to share those and use it. It becomes commonplace. I think using people's pronouns is a really big thing. Uh, so if you're meeting someone for the first time and you're going to have a real conversation with them, um, you should introduce yourself with your name and your pronouns and ask them for their name and their pronouns. Like every other organization right now, we really have refocused, reprioritized. We are looking at anything, any legislation, any activity uh, by the Senate that requires immediate attention. My uh, clinical practice has predominantly been focused on supporting families and children. Right now, what we're focusing on is connecting people with virtual resources that help support social distancing. The purpose of which was to look at uh, options like ranked choice voting, uh, voting by mail, uh, more efficient use of our polling locations. Uh, we work with the Town Department of Planning and Community Development and bring together what used to be several uh, separate cultural entities. I'm the um, Curator of Public Art and I work to develop public art projects in Arlington temporary. They're all temporary projects that have a pretty strong community engagement aspect. You know, we do have some federal government money. We do have some um, some pots of, of resources that we might be able to to use or utilize or move around. And if we can do that, we really don't want to touch the savings. Um, and I just wanted to add one last thing uh, before going back to Katie for the last section, um, and that is that. Um, Norm had mentioned earlier one of our staff members, uh, Jared Sweet, our editor extraordinaire. Uh, he edited both of the reels you just watched, and he did that um, within the last 48 hours when we made a pivot uh, on the way that we were going to present this format. Um, that's the kind of thing that Jared does for us, so appreciate it, sir. Um, and now um, over to Katie for to talk about the website and a media update. Um, we will then have a period uh, for questions and answers if there are any, and uh, then we will ask Mr. Leone to close the, the festivities down. Katie. All right, thank you, James. Um, yeah, so I will keep this brief. I will just be going over kind of our website, our YouTube channels and social media. Uh, let me share, share what I got. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, our website is acmi.tv. Um, if you go to the homepage, you immediately get three kind of highlighted blog posts of like current events going on. So right now we have our special town meeting, um, a link to the Veterans Day video, as well as what you're all here for is the AGM. Um, so we try to keep those first three posts up to date. And if you keep scrolling down, you kind of have the top, uh, I guess, most recent three videos submitted to the public channel. If you keep scrolling down, there's three for the educational channel. And then finally, the most recent three government videos. Um, kudos to uh, Len Diggins, actually. You know, Len was working for us part time, um, and part of his job was to help me keep the website up to date. Um, and then when he left to, or, you know, he was do he's doing the select board, uh, and he's thankfully still volunteering to keep these videos updated for us. So, Kudos to Len. I know he's not here. I hope he watches this, but his help does not go unnoticed because thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's like a couple pages like resources, like our show list of series, both old and new. Um, so if you know that you want to catch up on, um, you know, if it is a fiddle, you can go to the show list and kind of watch the whole, the whole season. Um, there are resources, ways to submit your, your video and to also um, request equipment through, through the web form. Um, moving on to our YouTube channels, we have um, ACMI's YouTube channel. If you don't already subscribe, please do. Um, the URL is youtube.com slash ACMI TV. Um, and we just have it organized by these popular playlists. The, Top ones are usually youth videos uh, or and or I guess the government uh, meeting coverage. The play the government meetings are always high views. Um, I also didn't mention for the website the hits went up during COVID. So right in 
April through June, ACMAT.TV saw like huge spikes because of, I assume because of the pandemic. Um, we also have our ACMI News YouTube channel. So if you don't already, you can subscribe to that. Um, it's just, if you're already familiar with YouTube, it's just an easy way to kind of receive notifications. Um, if you're not, you can also sign up for the ACMI News newsletter. So every week on Fridays, you'll get a newsletter, an email um, with a notification that the newscast is available on Friday evening. So that's an email. Um, you can sign up for that at acmi.tv slash news. We started our um, ACMI Sports YouTube channel a year ago. And with all the channels and all of our social media platforms, the number of subscribers and followers always go up from year to year um, or continue to go up. So here's our sports channel. It's kind of the hub for all the sports games right now. Some of the new, um, the, this first one that's highlighted is the, the Nosebleeds uh, podcast that some students started in the spring. They've been going strong, I think, since the pandemic started. So if you're into, if you're into sports, <laughs> check it out. Me, not so much. Um, moving on, I wanted to pull up our Facebook page. Um, so a lot of Arlington residents seem to be on Facebook, so we try our best to interact and post things on the Arlington um, Facebook uh, list, Arlington list on Facebook, as well as Arlington Parents Group. Um, we interact with the town. The town shares our videos on their pages. Um, certain state and local candidates will tag us and share videos, uh, especially this past year with all the elections. Um, and more recently, you know, because of COVID, we've had more um, sort of like live videos that play or don't play, uh, or they get broadcast directly to, to, to uh, Facebook. Um, we also have our CMA News Facebook page. It's still here. Anim has been really great about keeping this up to date. Um, so kudos to Anim for his work with this. And finally, you know, if you're into Instagram, we have both an ACMI, um, ACMI, ACMI News, and actually I believe a sports page as well. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, so if you're more visual or if you're an Instagram person, we try to keep these kind of, you know, updated with fun pics just to keep you motivated and know and see what's going on. So I kind of like coming back to see what's been going on. So I think that kind of covers, covers my section. I promised I'd keep it short. I think that moves on to our Q and A section. Yes. If anybody has any questions, um, do we want them to use the Q and A button? I would recommend. Oh, Charlotte button. Pierce has raised her hand, so maybe we can do it this way. All right, I'm going to allow Charlotte to talk. Hello, Charlotte. I hey. just wanted to, to jump in and say how rewarding it's been to get back involved with IPNI, or I mean uh, ACMI and. Um, just how astoundingly talented you all are at, at, at pivoting in the pandemic and and making sure all the bases are covered, like all the different stakeholders and the you know people who are interested in the studio and, and what it can do for them. So it's it's been a tremendous partner to me. I've gotten into podcasting, and you know anytime I need a resource have a question, I can just, I can literally call y'all, you know, you or Jeff and Katie and um, this just, it's so immensely valuable. So I just, thanks. <laughs> well, <Thank you. laughs> I want to thank you that others may want to jump in here as well, but I, I want to thank Charlotte. And I also, I'm glad that Charlotte uh, kind of uh, joined in here because uh, those of you who have had a chance to look at your annual report um, already, or I hope you will take the opportunity to do so in the future, um, we all know that the annual report is a lot of work. Um, and it's a lot of work for everybody, but most of all, it's a lot of work for me and Katie. And um, and I, um, you know, I, this is my seventh one. I can say without a doubt, my favorite part of being able to do the annual report is uh, features that we do, extra features, which in this case, uh, this year, uh, was a, a profile of Charlotte Pierce. And I got to have a lovely conversation <laughs> with 
Charlotte um, uh, to uh, to kind of get the full a fuller picture of the fact that she has been around. <laughs> There it is. Uh, uh, I, I'm blushing. It's just, it's just, you did, you are such a masterful writer, James. And just like the whole interview was pleasurable and fun. And I just made me want to get more involved with the studios. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, I hope that you'll find that it's worth the read. Um, it is cer certainly is in terms of the breadth and the depth of Charlotte's ex experience at ACMI and what she has to say about it. So got a flavor of that already here. Um, <laughs> but uh, it really is. It was a total pleasure. And um, please enjoy. Yeah, and just uh, to echo what Charlotte says, like definitely like working with a member, like working with members is so rewarding and so fun, and so challenging. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate you guys and you, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, read yeah. at the end. I wanted to mention, because it was in my notes to mention earlier and I forgot, but the joy of partnering with organizations this year. Um, that I know News has partnered with some of the groups um, to get continue, continued information from them, up to updates and things like that. But um, the, the partnerships that we've made with the library um, the lecture series with Richard Duffy, another lecture with Richard Duffy for the old Schwa Mill. Um, these are all things we did during, you know, COVID times. And we were, the planning was exceptional. Um, Katie did a lot of this stuff over um, StreamYard. And I just wanted to give like extra kudos to Katie mm -hmm. for not only learning that Charlotte introduced us to StreamYard. And it was one of these things where she said, it's fun, it's a studio in the cloud. And um, <laughs> he was using it for a podcast long before COVID. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful that we, we had that introduction when we did. Um, but I'm also grateful that, that Katie found a way for us to put it into practice. And you had mentioned all of the other groups, AEF, uh, Arlington uh, Community, education and uh, so all of these other groups that we're, we've partnered with um it's it's such a joy to now you know before it was like pulling them in and saying hey you should you should come to acmi and, and utilize the resources here and now they're calling us and they're like those resources still available so <laughs> I, I just um it's it's been really great that we've been able to partner up the way we have and i think that's that's something that I wanted to highlight um, this this annual general meeting because it's it's something that's very spectacular and I'm very glad to be working with a lot of those organizations. I didn't even mention them all. Those ones were the ones right at the top of my head. Back to you. All right, great. Um, I do not see any other virtual or literal hands raised at the moment. If you are trying to, please make yourself uh, known as best you can. Um, I did want to just say that I could, took a glance at our, at our um, attendees list. And if Sin and uh, Margie, if you are in fact both here. Um, Margie has he wants to talk. Up. Oh, good. Margie does. Good. Come on in, Margie. All right, Margie. Give that a go. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. I, I, um, just want to say, I think that what you have done, ACMI has done this past year during COVID time has just been amazing. I wondered how you would survive and you've done, I think miraculously just keeping it going. And I'm just amazed at all the work you've done and I'm uh, ready to jump in and help out as much as I can and uh, just want to be a part of, you know, doing something for the community and helping out ACMI because I've received so much support from them and want to give back as much as I can. So just thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Margie. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, those folks who are featured 
um, in, uh, in the annual report are particularly both productive. And, you know, I, I don't want to say everybody is dear to us, but, but, you know, people like Margie and Sin and Charlotte who have joined us tonight um, have just really showed their own commitment to us, ACMI, as well as to the community, as Margie just so eloquently put it. Um, and they've also just gotten better and better at what they do. Um, and so, you know, who could ask for more? And we got one more hand raised from Sin. Okay, am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah, actually, um, I, I, I hate to say this, but COVID has actually been a blessing because <laughs> it forced ACMI to do everything virtually, which means that I can still participate even though I'm out here in North Adams, two and a half hours away. <laughs> So yes, ha having studio nights, I, it's great that I've been able to continue to participate in that and keep in touch with all my friends back there. Um, I also kind of realized that um, my last news broadcast before I moved here was the last m newscast before you shut everything down. So in a way- I was, Connection, hmm. <laughs> Way I feel like I haven't left. So, so yeah. Oh, and um, Katie, do you, do you guys actually have my new address, or are you sending my annual report to my old address? That's a good um, question. I think we'll have to get your new address in North. Yeah. Adam. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll I think you, you deserve yeah, one. Send an email. We'll send you an email. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Gareth. All right. <laughs> yes, I'm here too, James. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, greetings from all of us to you both. Yes, our far western, uh, you know, branch of ACMI. Our, honorary uh, members. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, anybody else want to ask a question or make a comment? I see nothing. How about you, Katie? Nothing for me. Okay, I think um, people might think that, oh, an hour and 50 minutes is enough. <laughs> I'm going to bring, uh, maybe I'll bring John back, Norm. Yep, Norm, yes. Uh, unmute yourself, Norm, if you can. That's too technical for me. I'm not sure how to do that. <laughs> uh, well, just one last comment. Um, I, I generally am pretty quiet after I give my two cents, but I've often said philosophy for me has been that when you have creative people, you give creative people their head. So I try not to interfere with that creativity. But I think anybody watching this can see what this staff is really like. Tremendously creative, tremendously passionately involved in uh, ACMI and what the mission is of, for ACMI in the station, in the town. So again, I started by complimenting the staff uh, and I wanna end by complimenting the staff. So on that note, I think we should go over to Mr. Leone. I lost my tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you all. I want to thank the staff for everything you've done in the past year under these difficult COVID times. I liked all your videos and everything that's been um, produced during the current year is just amazing. And that being said, um, thank you to Norm for running the good ship. And that's our annual meeting for the 14th time. And maybe we'll see you next year for a 15th under better circumstances in the studio, I hope. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you later. We'll see you next year. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.